Hey guys, what is going on? Dorincourt back here with another tutorial on film scoring. Uh, today we'll make what's sometimes called a pulse bass. Uh, I'll call it a quick uh, film score arpeggio, something in that direction. Um, the patch we're going to create today sounds like this. But um, I'll just stop that for now because I'm sure you'll um, like it when I get straight to the point. So what are, we go uh, what are we going to use today? This is going to be an antidote patch. First of all, let's take a quick look at the notes here because that's always very important as the foundation, of course. So um, as you can see, this is a pretty um, simple melody. Um, uh, the uh, song is in the key of E minor. So um, I basically I'm alternating between uh, melody notes up here and the bass note um, down here. Uh, I'll just play that back on solo. And now uh, what I'll do is I'll create a new antidote and copy the notes over and then we'll see um, whether we can recreate that patch from scratch. I haven't had that project open in a very long time. Also, I did not prepare anything for this tutorial so uh, I'm really hoping that this is going to go all right. Um, now the first thing I'll do is of course grab this um, antidote and move it up here so that we are close to the original and then I'll copy over the notes and I'll leave the filter automation out for now because I don't think that's um, that necessary yet. Um, that's just a minor detail for later. So I'll put this to solo and of course first of all it's gonna sound um, pretty raw. Okay, now let's change that up a bit. Of course, number one, the patch is way too high, so I'll go down by 12 semitones. Of course, you could also just move down the notes by an entire octave. Which leaves us with this. Now, the notes are also way too long, so I'll use the amplitude envelope over here to, um, yeah, to adjust the note length a little bit. So now that uh, gives it a little bit of a plucked character. What's also important is playing with the filter envelope um, so we can emphasize the plucked character of the uh, sound a little bit more. So I'll turn the sustain all the way down and then it's, um, it's a very, very, um, it's a very, very small uh, range um, in which you can work here because as long as your decay is too high, the sound is just going to be um, too intense and uh, too emphasized. And also, if the decay is too short, uh, the filter envelope decay won't have enough time to do its magic. So we'll have to really adjust these dials here. Of course, also set up the filter so this actually takes some effect. So I guess we're pretty close there. I'll leave it at that. Maybe give it a little bit more release. Okay, um, now we have several ways of making the sound a bit wider. We could, for instance, um, up the count a little bit here and use the spread. But I feel like that gives a, a vibe of, that gives off a vibe that's a bit too trancy. So I'll leave the spread at one and also I'll leave the count at one. I'll just go, um, with a single wave and then use the uh, delay and the reverb um, effect sections down here um, to, uh, to make the sound a bit wider in the stereo spectrum. One thing I will do, however, is add a tiny bit of sub bass. Just between 10 and 20% that makes it sound a bit more, um, a bit more gnarly and a bit more, uh, more dark. Okay. Um, I'll continue with the delay. Uh, so I'll turn the dry wet to about 18%. That's going to be compensated for later by the compressor. And now it's very important to adjust the rates um, in a way you like. So let me just give this a little try. So 
so as you can hear, um, I put the right rate to exactly one sixteenth note and the left rate to one sixteenth plus. And with a low feedback, um, that means that uh, we won't have a scramble of notes, but we'll have precise delay. However, this slight um, difference between the two really helps enhance the stereo spectrum. Now I'll also activate the reverb and I'll keep the reverb quite short um, because um, too much reverb, um, I mean, most people, when they say that too much reverb can make a sound really muddy, um, that's oftentimes when they'll talk about the dry wet, but also long delay time or long uh, reverb reverberation times can achieve the same effect. So I'll stick to a very short 1.3 seconds, something along that direction. And then of course, I'll also activate the compressor. Now we're already pretty close. So, but at this point, I'll, um, I'll, sorry, I'll create a new automation lane. Copy that over. And now, of course, I have different settings on this antidote, so I'll have to adjust this a little bit here. Maybe lower the envelope amount a little bit. You could try giving it some resonance, but I don't think that's rather helpful. And now, um, if you still think that the sound is um, too raw and doesn't um, doesn't have enough depth, then um, I would also recommend maybe adding a low sine wave or triangle wave even. So I'll turn that down by two octaves and then bring that in. And of course, <laughs> I should also activate it, my bad. So there's the bass part. That shouldn't even need a lot of EQing right now because it's already rich and full. And now I'll mute the original and see how it sounds in context. And there you go. That's the basics of how you make um, a film score arpeggio. Now, of course, this doesn't sound um, exactly like the original. The original has a lot more tweaking and also some further effects processing. Uh, let's just listen to that one again. Obviously, I adjusted the delay a little bit differently and did some EQing. But what I'll do is I'll upload um, this patch, th th this original patch that um, this tutorial was about. Um, to some file hoster and you, you'll be able to download it and uh, the link will be in the description. And that way you can play around with it yourself. Okay, uh, that was it. Thanks for watching, Dorincode out.